So uh, welcome to my messy garage. And uh, why am I in my messy garage? Well, starting another project. Had a production company call me up and said they wanted me to build them an electric go-kart for a movie. Never built a go-kart before. I built other vehicles, a very fast go, you know, very fast golf cart, very fast camera car, camera bikes, motorcycles, things like that. Never a go-kart. Not knowing anything about go karts I started doing research online, trying to find everybody made a kit. Found a couple companies, and the one we ended up with is a kit from Go Kart God. They are not sponsoring this at all. I'm not getting paid for this series of videos. This is all me just doing it myself. The only payment I'm getting is from the production company to build this for them. What's going to happen is, is basically they're going to take this go kart and use it as a, one of the vehicles in the movie. But then I have to make some modifications to it to be able to mount cameras to it. I'm not talking like your basic GoPros or that kind of stuff mounting. I mean, they want to mount like an Aria Alexa to it. So that's a bigger production camera. It's, you know, beefy. So I will be doing some modifications to it. And the fact is I did like the fact that it's a one inch square tube chassis and frame. And uh, the, the kit basically included everything. The only thing it did not include is like the welder, maybe like... Um, some other small little hand tools that you might need, like a socket kit and things like that. But I mean, they, they even threw in this tool, which is basically to adjust the length of the chain that you're going to need to propel this go-kart down the road. Uh, they, they, they basically included everything you need. Um, they even included snap ring pliers. I never expected to get that in the kit, but it came in the kit as well. Uh, I mean, since we went electric, this is the motor that Electro and Co. basically supplied the kit. This thing weighs about 20, 25 pounds, somewhere in there. That's a 72 volt motor. Uh, I've heard estimates up to 70 miles an hour. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Um, so I, I figured, well, okay, well, why not just do a how-to kind of video at the same time of sort of doing like a review video, I guess. But again, um, not being sponsored by any of these companies at all. Uh, this has been 100% paid for by a production company, and they're paying me to basically build it for them for the movie. Uh, we are going to have to do some uh, setups that are not normal for the average day rider or driver of a go-kart. I don't know if they ride it or they drive it. I mean, basically, they drive it. So, might have to get, like, multiple seats. Like, I know I fit in an XL seat. And from what I've done on some research, you want to have the seat fit you snugly. You don't want to be sliding around in it. I don't know the size of the actor yet. Don't even know the size of the stunt person that's driving for the actor. So we might have to get multiple seats. Don't know yet. I'll be finding out in the future. Hopefully sooner than later. Uh, what I have seen, though, is what has come in this kit is very, very well put together. Um, high quality aluminum parts. Nice big thick, you know, braking system. Uh, it comes with this nice, wonderful, with the pads already in it, brake caliper. That is really cool. I didn't expect the pads to already be in there, but I'm not complaining. It makes it easier for me in the build. Uh, it even has this really cool little brake master cylinder. Uh, comes with all the tubing you need to run to the brakes and everything. Uh, it even comes with the uh, the rod for the brake linkage to the pedals, which uh, we are going to do something really cool with the pedals later on. All electronics you need. This is the brain to control the motor. Everything's included. The one other thing I did was is I put together this binder. Yeah, I, we call it a build book. Now, uh, go go kart god they basically give you this file once you buy the kit i went ahead and basically laminated every single page and the reason i did that was you don't have to but the reason why i did it was because as we're building or we're on production sites if something gets messy or anything it's not going to ruin what's inside this book this book has everything you need table of contents list of parts it even goes over the frame and exactly how to weld the frame together yeah there will be some welding in this project um, and it's it's a pretty pretty cool instruction manual slash uh, everything you need to know about it. The other thing is the reason why I did this is because I'm going to have to take some notes that the production company is going to need to know about. 
So in the back of the book, I'll have my notes in there for them. Things like maintenance, you know, what we found for different situations, things like that. Uh, like the tire pressure. Uh, the thing with the tires is there's nothing on there that tells you how much PSI each tire needs. So quick email to go-kart God, and they basically told me between 7 and 15 pounds of you know, PSI. So I'm like, well, I didn't know that. It's not labeled on the tire. So this book will have the note on it. Mostly stunt guys want to know about that or the driver or the cart is going to want to know. Plus, it makes it easier for anybody who has a question, what is the PSI? It's already there. The other thing I did was this. This is the front tire. It's pretty beefy, nice size tire, very hard compound. I went ahead and inside the tire, I, I labeled how much PSI with the label. They can peel it off if they need to for production or leave it on. This is the front tire. It's nice and it's a nice size tire. The back tire is even bigger and wider. Um, we opted to go with Go Kart God to pre assemble the tires for us because I've never actually put a tire on a rim and I don't have a machine to put this tire on the rim. It was, you know, very, very small extra expense, but it's going to be worth it in the long run because. I don't want to do it. You're going to need to get some of your own tools to build this project. You're going to need at least a welder. Uh, we're going to be using Loctite for a lot of things. Uh, even what the, even what Go Kart God did was is they they basically on every castle nut they put a, a locking pin in it, so vibration or whatever would not make the nut come off the the bolt. Um, doesn't matter. We're still going to use thread locker just to be safe. Uh, this is a production and I don't want anything to happen while they're doing their filming. As of right now, I don't know if I'm going to be there or not. So that's the one reason why they're going to have to rely on the build book as well. Because I sure don't want calls at 3 o'clock in the morning. Hey, what does this do? What does that do? So we're going to basically overbuild it and it's going to be a fun project. The other thing is in this series of videos, I'm not going to teach anybody how to weld. Um, the reason being is because there's thousands of videos on YouTube already on how to weld. Uh, I've talked to the guys from Go Kart God, and they basically said you can use a stick welder, you can use a uh, MIG, TIG, even a flux core welder. I mean, this this part is even the on and off switch is included. Every part you need is included. There's not one part missing from this whole thing. One of the other coolest things I've seen so far in this kit is what Go-Kart God did with the frame. It is a square tube frame, but every piece is laser etched or laser cut for what it is need to be done to it. So for example, this is going to be a bend and this notch will go into there. Once you finish bending it, you, let, you tack it in place and then when it's done, Weld the whole thing up and it's not moving ever again. Very, 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 very cool system. They even did it where they've got everything marked, everything lined up. They even make these, uh, they even laser cut these little tabs in the, in the back of, you know, well, they even cut these laser tabs at the end of each piece. So they are slotted and they only fit in the corresponding hole so you really can't screw this up um, the <laughs> they thought of everything they really did the this notch with the pin right there I don't know if you can see that but it basically when you fold it up it'll literally lock in place tack weld it and then weld it when it's complete and ready and you're ready to rock and roll very very well well designed kit um, wouldn't say this is going to be easy to bend by your hand, but you pretty much could. I mean, I'm starting to bend this right now. Just like that. Bent it a little bit by hand. I guess it's enough cut in there to, to pretty much be able to bend it without any major vices or anything like that. But, I mean, that is such a cool idea what they did with that. Again, even, even the small parts, I mean, it's even labeled, see? 
E 3.2 and it's got those little laser tabs in the ends. I, I just don't see how you can misalign anything or put it in the wrong place. It's all pre-labeled for you. I mean, they, they included, they even include this heavy duty chain. This thing is pretty thick and beefy. It's not a bicycle chain, I can tell you that. It's more like a motorcycle chain. And uh, it's packed in oil. So I would say you might need some gloves for some of the things you're gonna do with this kit. Once you've ordered your kit from Go Kart Guide, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a bunch of packages shipped to you by uh, UPS, FedEx, whatever works easiest for them. But what's also gonna happen is it's gonna come from multiple different companies. So for example, BMI is gonna ship you the axle and the brake system and things like that. Now, what you wanna do also is when you get your packages, make sure to check every piece of paper they wrap the packages in. Because BMI hides parts in wrapped up paper. So you wanna make sure you go through them all so you don't lose any parts or accidentally throw one of those out and then you're gonna have to sit there and go, well, where's the main bearing or where is the main, you know, bolts or whatever it is you might misplace. Once you've got all your parts together, I went and made a list. I also separated them stuff out. I put things in Ziploc bags so I know like this goes to the axle. Um, these go to holding the axle to the frame. So I separated them all out, made my own little bags. So it'd be easier in the long run. I know where everything is. I know everything I need for each part of the directions and each part of the kit will be in each individual bag. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just something that I did to make it easier for me. So as I go down the checklist of the build book, I can sit there and go, okay, this part's done, this part's done. And then what I have when I'm done is a bunch of Ziploc bags. So, but they can also be reused. Now, I'll post these pages up on the video as well. So this build book has some really, really, I call it a build book, you can call it directions, call it whatever you want. But uh, they have a checklist in here. On one of the pages is a checklist to show like what you're gonna get in the electric kit or what you get in the gas kit. Uh, they also have um, a really cool hardware list where it basically describes every single piece of hardware you're going to get once you order all these parts. Now just remember, go through your packages, make sure you don't misplace any of the pieces of paper that have parts wrapped up in them. Now, a good example is I didn't put this in a Ziploc bag yet because I wanted to show what I was talking about. So this is basically a wrapped up piece of paper. If you unwrap it, got some weight to it. Inside are all these split rings that you need. Uh, so just check all the pieces of paper before you start throwing them out because some of the smaller bolts are light enough that in the paper you won't know they're there. So again, check all the wrapped up pieces of paper, wads of paper, whatever you want to call it, and make sure you don't misplace any of the bolts or parts that come in those kits. Okay, I'm not an expert at go-karts. This is literally my first build of a go-kart ever. So I'm going to basically reveal everything I'm doing. I'm going to show exactly how I did it all. Uh, step by step, I'm going to go through what I, the build book and basically go step by step, page by page, and go through and build this whole thing. And I'm going to do it right here in this garage. The reason for building this kit in this garage is to show that you don't need a big facility to build this go-kart. It's going to be fun, it's going to be cool, and uh, well, thank you for watching, and if you uh, want to see what's going on with the next episode, please subscribe and like if you liked it. If not, sorry, I'm not the best when it comes to these YouTube videos.